Okay, so we've solved this all now. We understand there was plenty of gas to begin with, with volcanoes and what everything, and the small planets lost and the big planets kept it. End of story. You're, you're talking like a true astronomer. We just average everything out. Except we get a place like Titan. I, I don't get that one, right? Titan is a moon. It's not a planet. It's obviously not nearly as big as Jupiter and Saturn. Why is it so strong in its atmosphere compared to Mars? I mean, bigger moon isn't a problem. I mean, you just have to look how big it is. A big moon should be able to trap an atmosphere just as much as a planet of the same size. True, but it's I remember not... that Ganymede is bigger than Mercury. Some That's of these right. moons are larger than some of these planets. But what we've nonetheless got is there's Mars, which is much more massive That's than right. Titan, but has a sod all atmosphere. And Titan has an incredible atmosphere. So here's Titan. It's yeah. uh, the second biggest moon in the solar system. That's right. Um, and orbiting Saturn. And here's a lovely picture with, I think this is a tiny moon, Epimetheus and Titan. Yeah. You often see these pictures of here are the moons and they all scale to fill the page. They look about the same, but this shows you how, just how <laughs> dramatically different it is. I mean, Titan, as you said, is a big moon, given it's the second biggest. It's only just slightly smaller than Mercury. Yeah, it's, it's 2,400 kilometers or so uh, across. And um, it's got a lot of atmosphere. Um, its atmosphere is mostly nitrogen with all sorts of organic hazes in it. Yep. So it doesn't really have clouds in the same sense that uh, the Earth does. Okay. It has haze, okay. like a polluted day in, uh, on Earth, I guess. So, i.e., it's a moon version of LA. <laughs> uh, yes. And um, actually, somewhat more beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Orange color is a bit like the air in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can see actual bands of it. Okay, yep. Yeah. If you get through it to the surface, it's pretty dark because, I mean, first of all, it's out at Saturn, which is 10 times further away, um, and that means the sunlight is 100 times fainter. So, even above the clouds, it's pretty dim, 100 times fainter That's than right. sunlight on Earth. And then you've got all this haze, and by the time you're at the surface, it'll be pretty dark and murky. Yep. Uh, but nonetheless, they, they, uh, one space probe has landed and briefly sent a picture back, which is rather boring. Yep. Um, but that's what you see on the surface. However, they landed in a boring place uh, by doing radar observations and trying to penetrate the haze at infrared wavelengths that can see through it. Yep. We realized actually the surface is probably pretty interesting. There seem to be these very flat radio reflective regions, which are almost certainly lakes. That's right. And in fact, they are very smooth lakes, almost smooth as a mirror, judging by how powerfully the radio waves are reflected off them. Okay. So where are they? Lakes of water, or they have to be something. Well, they different. can't be water. Yeah. it's far too exactly. cold. Water to be frozen. So these are probably lakes of methane or ethane or something like that. So something that won't be frozen at the very cold temperatures here, but can still exist as a liquid. You might even have wax icebergs or something. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But there certainly seem to be lakes of something, and there seem to be also channels. So you might get on Earth. You've got a, a cycle of evaporating water, then falling down as rain. Yeah. You might get the same thing only using hydrocarbons at the much lower temperatures on Titan. So this kind of sounds like a very, it sounds a lot better than Mercury. Yeah, I mean, I, that's why I don't like this planetary chauvinism. I mean, <laughs> the idea planets are important, we don't bother about they're only a moon. I mean, this is much more interesting than many of the planet side things. No, I agree. I mean, Mercury is boring in comparison to, to Titan. So there's actually a mission being planned as we speak to Titan, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the one probe that landed there, the European Space Agency's Huygens probe. Um, 97, I think it was. Got a bit of data, but yep. nothing very much. They've looked at it from above, from the Cassini spacecraft. It'd be nice to actually tour around. I'd, I'd love to see these lakes and <laughs> oh, the yeah. mountains and everything. And so the idea is the so-called Dragonfly mission, which is under development, which is a radioisotope nuclear-powered drone. Yep. This is not going to work on most planets because you have such a dense atmosphere. I mean, the pressure at the surface is more than the pressure on the Earth, but the gravity is much lighter. And to get the same pressure, given the low temperature, the density has to be very high. That's this right. is a very easy planet to fly in. Exactly. It's a lot easier than trying to fly on Mars, which they still have flown a drone on Mars now. Yes. So this is very easy to fly and navigate, which means we have a very cool way of exploring it. Yes, yeah, so I'm very much looking forward. It's going to be a long time off before this thing is built, launched, arrives there and lands. But you can imagine it touring around and exploring the whole planet, uh, the whole moon. Yep. And it'll be very interesting. It's kind of amazing to think we can have some drone shots of a moon next decade. That's right. <laughs>